Last week we were told that a trailer would be dropping, and a trailer did indeed drop. Interestingly though, if you don't watch it in the right place, it just doesn't look right at all. Because if you go on Disney+, Plus, the actual proper platform, like if you're watching it outside of the UK, you'll get the proper trailer, but if you watch it on YouTube or on the official Do uh, Doctor Who YouTube channel, the colour is not correctly done. It looks really overexposed. Like, th this is the stuff that we saw from the church on Ruby Road, and it did not look this white or washed out. It, yeah, apparently, though, they just did the, the post-production processing wrong for the trailer they didn't correct it but if you watch it on the disney plus streaming platform internationally you'll get the proper trailer unfortunately we have to deal with this one now though and amazingly nearly five million views in four days which is incredible like and like this doesn't even count people who maybe just watched it on twitter or on facebook it doesn't include the nearly six hundred thousand people who watched it on the official doctor who youtube channel etc etc now people have been saying oh those numbers are inflated because they've been paying for ad space but like where do you like where did you think that you watched um, those doctor who posters or those doctor who trailers in the past like you probably watched them because the platform paid for them to be there like fair enough if you don't want to count this official like nearly five million on the disney plus youtube channel but then you kind of have to discount the the concept of marketing i don't know anyway like it, people who were like talking about watching the doctor who flux posters and those moving banners around liverpool do you think that the bbc just put them up there for free no you have to pay for the marketing so the fact that nearly five million eyeballs have seen the official trailer for the upcoming series of doctor who which drops in may i see this as an absolute win and it kind of shows that disney are all in in terms of like investing and like promoting the show um interestingly though the doctor who trailer on the youtube channel the official channel season one trailer which is interesting because this trailer goes into like a lot of like recurring elements like you see the 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 doctor landing at unit you've got the return of mel here played by bonnie langford you've got kate stewart as well there's also people are perceiving that's definitely not bonnie langford <laughs> you've also got people perceiving this salute as well at the end of what appears to be the regency era episode as the doctor doing the customary salute to captain jack harkness and people are assuming that jonathan groff who is definitely in the regency episode is playing a regenerated or recast version of captain jack harkness there's also the rumors as well that mrs flood or maybe even jinx monsoon's character is the meddling monk either way we've got a lot of uh, potential ideas for uh, the show's past being implemented in what's meant to be a season one so it'll be interesting to see how rusty davis threads that needle but the first thing that stood out for, for me for this trailer it is of course the David Bowie music, uh, which is not cheap to license by any stretch of the imagination. I may change me. Which, you know, it's a really cool use of the music, and they've done a remix to slightly altered version for this trailer, but that could not have been cheap. So that's that's one big demonstration of the money on display. But also with this shot here of the TARDIS with the flowers here, it looks like, you know, just let this old box gather dust as the doctor said in the parting of the ways also the doctor landing in the middle of unit headquarters all of that stuff as well i mentioned in my review of the star beast and it seems like russell t davis has been watching a lot of stephen moffat stories like he like when he left the show in 2009 2010 he didn't stop watching the show he watched along with um when he watched when Stephen Moffat was the showrunner and taking over. And I get that impression here because of how many elaborate scenarios he puts the TARDIS in. And he's like, we're going to use the iconography of the police public call box and really, really run with it. Like, if you've noticed in all of the 60th anniversary specials, the TARDIS doesn't actually conventionally land anywhere. Even in this trailer when they land in Ruby Sunday's house. <laughs> And then he spoke and it just breaks in because it's too big for it in wild blue yonder it sort of like warps in it flies away at the end of wild blue yonder as well like it seems like rusty davis is adamant on not having conventional tardis landings and conventional tardis departures and you know I, i'm all for that bring back the headless monks well one reason why there is the rumor of the meddling monk is because because we see the 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 15th doctor here in this monk outfit 
all it needs is a monk outfit and we're going to run away with with 101 theories um and yeah but the production values on display here are absolutely insane i love this shot <laughs> This one of these weird devices which are covering this planet in smoke. Um, oh, also one other really cool image involving the TARDIS. The 15th Doctor just screaming into the void of space because, I don't know, something's happened. <laughs> he drops his phone in the doorway and he just yells. So yeah, what's the history of the meddling monk? Oh, well, if if you want to go onto my onto YouTube and type in the time meddler doctor who my review should be one of the first things that pops up this changed the canon forever doctor who the time meddler check you know check out that video that breaks it all down but the monk is another member of the doctor's species he is he is a time lord pay, played by peter buttersworth um, in the 1960s and rufus hound and Gemma whelan in big finish audio dramas essentially is like the master but a bit more pantomime villain ducky who drops his airpods in space <laughs> yeah uh yeah that would, that would annoy me as well one takeaway i got from this trailer as well is that this is from the 1960s episode when they see the beatles the world could slide into the pit we can tell that because of the uniform choices, of course. So the Doctor appears to take Ruby into the future, or at least like beyond the 1960s, and shows her what the world would look like if the Beatles never existed. I'm kidding. This is what the world might look like if, for whatever reason, whatever the weird alien plot is in the Beatles episode, in the Devil's Chord episode, isn't stopped. This seems like a callback to a classic era story, a fourth Doctor story called Pyramids of Mars, where it's set in 1911, and the Doctor and companion Sarah Jane Smith, played by the late great Elizabeth Sladen, uh, they're in 1911, and the Egyptian god of destruction and death, Sutek, is wanting to bring his gift of jelly to all of human life and destroy the universe and sarah jane is like well we know that the world didn't end in 1911 so the, so the fourth doctor played by tom baker is like okay so let's see what happens in the future let's go back to the 1980s because that's where sarah jane is from let's go to the 1980s and see and they open the tardis doors and it's a barren wasteland and sarah jane is like okay we have to go back and stop sutak so i'm assuming that this is going to happen with ruby saying you know the world didn't end in the 1960s and the doctor's like okay let's go forward to the future i heard a few people saying that this was actually meant to be in the unquiet dead which is the first ninth doctor and rose tyler historical story where they go back to 1869 cardiff and the gelth are there um and i've, I've read that as well does anyone have a source as to the confirmation that a scene like pyramids of mars was meant to be in like unquiet dead at some point but they cut it let me know if you can find that source i'd really appreciate that because i've read that as well but i don't know where so it seems like that idea that was going to be done nearly 20 years ago with the ninth doctor and rose is being done now with the 15th doctor and ruby slide into the pit this is what we're trying to stop Oh yeah, and of course we've got Michelle Greener just Carla Sunday saying, don't let my daughter die. And the doctor's like, I'm definitely not going to let your daughter die. I will keep her safe. Wink, wink. I promise. So yeah, it's so, I love the, the edits as well. This is, uh, just generally speaking, we can like comb through this frame by frame for like footage and Easter eggs and stuff, but it's such a well cut trailer. It's taken me all this time to change. I love the glasses look, by the way. These are great spectacles. But yeah, it's it's a trailer that tells a story that sets a tone. Give me the love <laughs> It's like that perfectly cut Scream Twitter account. I adore it so much. But yeah, it looks so cool. It tells the story. It showcases all of the different bonkers settings. It, it, you know, I'm the doctor. I travel in this machine. I think that this scene with the butterfly effect is just going to be like a one and done throwaway scene in the first episode. Stepping on a butterfly? Well, that's not going to happen, is it? Oh, what's wrong? <laughs> it's, it's such a cool, fun cutaway. Here's, uh, here's the Regency episode. Oh my, Bridgerton. There we go. I mentioned it in my video essay about how Rusty Davis reinvented the companion in 2005. You know, they, she openly knows what Bridgerton is. Here's Jinx Monsoon this as place well. Is oh, I love this shot as well, by the way. 
I need to know she'll be okay. This one here. I put this on the Doctor Who Perfect Shots account. This is from the Devil's Chord. Like, once again, the music, and you can tell because of her outfit and the hairstyle. So cool. Such a good shot. We get this little teaser as well. Of there's Rose Noble, played by Yasmin Finney in the background, and there's Lenny Rush playing Morris. Love it. Council Geeks didn't see it like that as it complicates things. Uh, didn't see which bit specifically, sorry, for Evil Dalek. Uh, which bit are you referring to, sorry? Uh, and yeah, um, there's this bit as well. I'm, I'm stealing this joke from Review of Death, by the way. Billy and Matt. They were like, oh, uh, th th this, this looks like a woman's hand. And then they did the black hat a bit with Tom Baker. You have a woman's hand. <laughs> you have a woman's purse. It's such a funny bit. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, but yeah, and the butterfly effect. Because I think the theory is that all of these weird supernatural things that are happening are being brought in by the toy maker, and it's the toy maker's legion. And like after the events of the flux, and after the events of Wild Blue Yonder, more supernatural stuff is happening. So it's maybe a bit easier to go back and change time, which is why this butterfly effect thing could be a little throwaway joke. The butterfly effect gag, which, to be honest, I've held this view for a while, but time traveling doctor only works according to how any given writer wants it to work. I think it depends on, like, the seriousness of it. Like, if you want to do, a, like, a quick throwaway scene, like a throwaway joke. Uh, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And this is well the holograms. We'll talk about this some more in a moment. If you want to do a quick throwaway joke about the butterfly effect, you know, have at it. This is the same sensibilities that Stephen Moffat did, you know, where he'd, like, he'd open an episode... Or he'd like he'd do a random cutaway to a big historical event or a big historical moment and just mess around with the timey wimey aspect of it. But crying out loud, Rory left his iPhone charger in King Henry the Eighth suite. You know, the time travel stuff and the seriousness of it—it's dependent on the scene. It's a scene by scene basis. But yeah, uh, I'm assuming that this is the like how many faces have you had type of scene like that we're going to be getting maybe in the Regency episode. This could even be like. Uh, like Captain Jack Harkness being like, oh, you're one to talk about having facelifts and then montages through all of the previous Doctors. Fans who are, you know, obsessive, and I respect them for it, has already figured out that this is a shot from the next Doctor, the 2008 Christmas special. So that's great commitment to it. But I'm assuming that we're going to be getting loads of Doctors here as well, showcasing it. Um... That's a passing line, though. You know, it is a passing line, but th to be fair, remember, in The Power of Three, they do have a scene when... They have they, like the doctor takes Amy and Rory to King Henry the Eighth's, and then they're hiding under the bed, and he sneezes, and they get caught. It, you know, if it's like okay, we're gonna do a butterfly effect joke, like in a jokey scene in the first. If we're gonna do a butterfly effect joke in the first act of the story, akin to the Mavity scene at the beginning of Wild Blue Yonder, where we change history, if we're gonna be doing that. And then we also make the crux of the resolution of the very serious, dramatic, high-stakes story rely on not there, on there not being a butterfly effect. That's an issue. But you can have fun with it. It's a bonkers fun blue box show. It's context... It, it's so context-dependent. And also, this shot here is rumoured to be from the Stephen Moffat penned episode, where the rumour is, is that the Doctor stands on a landmine, and... All of the episode, or a big chunk of it, takes place just in this one location where they have to defend the Doctor while he disarms the landmine. That's a really cool idea, but of course that remains to be seen. We'll have to see how that goes. <laughs> this, uh, this is also a borrowed observation from Review of Death. Go check out their podcast. Go subscribe to Batman March on YouTube. Maybe Jinx Monsoon's character turns the Beatles into their instruments. So this is like Ringo Starr doing a Nightmare on Elm Street peering through the wall type effect. That's cool. To be turning more and more. And also this is from the political story where you've got Gwian uh, who has got the slug people on the street. But yeah, so th there's this line of dialogue in the trailer as well. Things seem to be turning more and more supernatural. Yeah, more and more supernatural is meant, uh, it's been perceived as this is an effect, um, a side effect of the toy maker and the wild blue yonder salt at the end of the universe and such. There's no such thing as monsters, it's just creatures you haven't met yet. 
<laughs> so yeah, that's fun. That seems like very like eleventh Doctor as well. Just like oh no, it's fine, and then just immediately running away. But yeah, it's a really well cut trailer. Some great teasers, but it, honestly this is like a two minute trailer and i look forward to seeing how it maybe gets cut down for like tv broadcasting into like 30 or 45 or 60 second increments i'm looking forward to like just seeing how that edit comes across but this is a two minute trailer and i feel like hype is up interest is up but spoilers are still like we know no more than we did like a week ago and that's like an incredibly well-cut trailer. Obviously, there are some fan theories and rumors and stuff. Like I was talking about that Stephen Moffat rumored landmine episode. But it feels like we're still... There's so much that there's yet to be seen for this. And we know that we're, we're getting eight episodes. But there's so much variety in this trailer. So much going on with the quick cuts. All this time to like, maybe this is ruby in front of that tardis with the flowers in front and the weird figure behind her as well who knows what this is from no idea this once again who knows where this is from this is regency this is abbey road i'm assuming yeah there's like so much variety here like in just these like in just the, like let's count it this is from beatles episode Give me all this time to the landscape episode who knows where these are from like these could be like we could have seen footage from all eight episodes of the series plus some church on ruby road there with the doctor falling like and we, we don't know anything it's so good it's such a well-cut trailer massively respect whoever put this thing together change me but i can't trace time yeah, this is such a good trailer. I, I, I don't have, like, much more to add in regards to, oh, here's 30 things you missed, or, or apart from here's a tuning fork, uh, and it seems like there's going to be some big musical set piece when they set off the sprinkles or something. Everything. But yeah, so cool. I'm really looking forward to the Beatles episode. And I, I think that, yeah, that's rumored to be the second one. Judging by the number of outfits, yeah, I'm pretty sure there's shots from every episode. We, of course, will not know until the end of June, beginning of July, when we've broken it all down. But, yeah, really, really exciting stuff. And, like, even this, like, where is this located? Like, th there's no other, like, environment like this in the trailer, to my knowledge, at least. So, yeah, very exciting stuff. Can't, I, yeah, I can't wait to can't wait to like see how this all pans out but it tells a story it shows scope it shows scale it shows a bunch of the guest actors it just looks like a really fun time it's possible everything is possible and the fact that this has been seen by roughly five million people is just the icing on the cake here you go on the official disney plus youtube channel and obviously, it's apples and oranges. I'm not going to make a direct comparison. But this has been viewed by a million more people than the Taylor Swift era's tour trailer. By a million in, like, a quarter of the time. It's such a great achievement. Was it, wasn't there, like, a, an Acolyte trailer for... When, when did that drop? One second. Star Wars trailer. He's back at Koshamas' house. Oh, of course. Okay, we're not quite at, we're not quite at Star Wars levels yet. But the fact that this little British strange show with a new era in four days has got nearly five million viewers is absolutely incredible. You passed over June Hudson. One second. Which one's June Hudson? Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. I remember that. Yeah, sorry. Uh, yeah, she was in... Um, um, yeah, she was in that trailer, wasn't she? Two seconds. Universe at my fingertips. She's been attacked by Jinx Monsoon, right? This place is... Yeah, that's isn't that June Hudson, like Doctor Who costume designer or something? Like she's just cameoing randomly here. Completely. <laughs> <laughs> Things seem to be turning more. Uh, fun times.